Hey there, YouTube family. Welcome back to another hour-long painting lesson. Today, we are going to be painting the Golden Gate Bridge, which you can see right here on the canvas. And it was actually the lesson chosen today because it was voted for over on Patreon. So thank you to everyone who took part in that. And you know what? I'm really looking forward to this one. So thank you for picking it. So with that said, We'll talk a little bit about materials quickly, and then we'll jump into the painting process. Here on the canvas, I have a, a complex drawing. It was done with two mediums. One was this woodless colored pencil set, and I like this because it allows me to allocate different colors to different subjects. So here you can see the grid is done in red. I use that to draw it. And then I have this purple cloud in the background. I did the entire bridge as well. And then I solidified the drawing with this fine tip Sharpie. And I used this because it essentially makes the drawing show through the first couple layers of acrylic paint because it's so stark. So if I kind of paint over the bridge while I'm doing the background and I'm a little bit messy, I can still see the drawing and I don't have to redo it, which is really easy and nice. I also like these two mediums because they don't tend to bleed and blend into the paint. Sometimes when you're using a charcoal or graphite on canvas and then use a delicate color like titanium white or a yellow, they can kind of become a little bit muddy and blend together. So that kind of avoids all of those issues. As always, this is a, a fairly complicated drawing. There's a lot of line work. You can find the reference photo and the digital sketch over on Patreon to help you with that drawing process. Up there, I do have over 50 exclusive hour-long lessons. You can also get instant access to our exclusive Facebook group where you can share your work with us and you know we can all do little critiques and help each other get better. But with that said, that is what I'm using on the canvas. It is nine by 12 inches. Then down here, I have a dish of water. This is for cleaning my brushes and for also kind of wetting them to extend the wet life of our paint. We'll talk more about that in the lesson though. Here I have a small little towel and I use this to wipe off the excess paint and water. Here I have a glass picture frame. I use it as a painting palette because it's just so easy to clean and scrape off that paint. Then in regards to brushes, I have a larger square headed brush. This is two centimeters long. I have a medium sized square headed brush. It is one centimeter long. Then I have a smaller square headed brush and I keep putting my hand here just so you have a visual reference of how big it is. It is half a centimeter long. Then I have two more brushes. They are both smaller round headed brushes and I like these for softer applications like clouds and mist and that sort of thing. These square headed brushes are great for harder lines and delivering a good amount of paint. So that is essentially what we're using here on the canvas to begin with, except for the paint. In regards to the paint, I have two pigments on either side. I have a Mars black and I have a titanium white. At the end of this painting, we are going to have a vibrant, very richly colored painting. However, we're going to paint the base layer with these two pigments. We're going to blend them, we're going to make grays, and we're going to do this in what's called an achromatic palette. And an achromatic palette is white, black, and a bunch of grays. And you do this as a base layer in painting to help you allocate depth and value. Value is essentially how dark or light something is, so it tells you how much light is on a subject, and it also wraps around subjects to show depth and gradients. And that's something that's really, really important, and it can be difficult when you're also incorporating color, because a lot of us have a lot of preconceived notions regarding color and how bright or dark varying colors are. A lot of us innately think of yellow as a bright pigment and red as kind of a medium to dark pigment. But in all actuality, you can get dark and light yellows, you can get dark and light reds, and when you start mixing that in there, it can kind of get confusing and hurt your ability to create depth. And you can really simplify it by creating a base layer in black and white first. Once you've done that, we're going to glaze on our color, which is another different technique, but don't you worry, I'll walk you through all of these and we'll have a really fun time learning a lot about acrylic painting while creating a great acrylic painting. So that's what we're going to do here today. I'm going to uh, turn up the heat in the studio because it's a little cold here in Canada, and then we will get right to our painting.
So here we are, we have our titanium white, we have our Mars black, and in regards to the other colors that we'll be using, I'll list them all in the video description, that way you can kind of jump ahead and know what we're going to use before you get started. With that said, I'm going to take my largest square headed brush, again it is two centimeters long, I'm going to dip the tip of it in some water here, make sure that it's nice and damp, this is going to help us drag the paint farther and keep it wet longer so our blending will be easier. Then I'll take some titanium white and move that right in between our Mars black and titanium white and I'll grab a little bit of this Mars black, get it on the corner of my brush and then move it into here. And I'm only grabbing a little bit because Mars black is a very strong pigment in comparison to titanium white and it'll quickly dilute it and make it darker so we only want a little bit. Then I'm going to start applying this mixture up to the top of my sky and we're going to begin in the background and work our way to the foreground because it's generally just a really easy way of layering everything on top of one another that way in the end we're painting the bridge last as it's closest to us and we get to put all of our new strokes over it and cover up any messy strokes we did in the background. Now here, as you can see, I'm going in with a very loose stroke to begin for my sky, and I'm going to create a bit of a gradient. I'm going to make the top of the sky a little bit darker, and then as I move inwards, I'll start interjecting more titanium white and making it a little bit brighter. So here I'll take some extra titanium white, and I'll move that in. And I'm doing this to create a gradient, to create a vignette, and to create some depth. It'll look like the light is coming from the horizon here, and it's illuminating the bottom of the sky, and then it'll get slightly darker as we move up. And that is a very easy way to establish depth in a large area quickly on the canvas. And I don't want it to be too dramatic, Otherwise, it'll look like a kind of stormy sky or a very dramatic time of day. I want this to be a little bit softer, so I'm just going to take my time and make it a soft gradient, as you can see. As you can also see, as I move around my bridge here, the sharp edge is really great at allocating areas well and not moving over areas if I don't want them to. I'm going to go over a lot of the beams here that we have in the bridge because we'll be repainting those a little bit later and I will be able to see them through this first layer of acrylic paint. And I also want to make sure I get all of the canvas. Now the gradation, or the gradation, is um, quite subtle here, which is great, which is what you always want to begin with, and then you slowly start to increase it as you feel you need to. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to take a little bit of extra Mars Black, mix that in here, create a slightly darker mixture than what we did at the top, and then I'll throw that up here. And we always start with a much softer application to begin with, something with less contrast, because it's easy to build contrast, but it's difficult to take it away. It's easy to add dark pigments, but to make them light again is fairly difficult because acrylics are innately fairly transparent. So here, I'm going back and I'm adding a little bit more of that dark pigment into the sky and it's working really, really well. I'm going to move it over here to the other side of our painting, too. There we go. And I'm being fairly loose with my strokes. If you wanted a perfect gradient and a, a perfectly calm, clear sky, I'd advise that you didn't make a lot of these kind of diagonal strokes and a lot of these little individual strokes. Make long, soft strokes. That way you're not pushing paint to either side and creating all of these different impressions. But I want my sky to be a little bit more interesting. I want it to have the impression of some clouds in it. And the best way of doing that is creating some of these smaller strokes and putting an angle on them as well. So I'm doing a lot of tapping in this little tap and drag, and it's a, a great technique that will make it look much more interesting. And I'm choosing to do that because we have such a big sky here. I don't want it to be boring. I still want it to have something neat in it. So I have these little clouds here. 
You can see I'm using the edge of my brush instead of the full length of it. And I'm just trying to interject some interesting pieces to it. So I'm starting with the darkest pigment at the top, and then I'll add in some extra titanium white. Start to move that down. And if you find that you're getting a very perfect stroke and you want it to be a bit more loose, hold your brush farther back rather than up close. I think a lot of us begin painting up close because it's how we were taught to write and how to draw generally. But when you are painting, and I learned this in university and it was very, very much enforced, um, holding it back here allows you to use your arm and shoulder more and it'll give you a much more fluid stroke and make everything look a little bit more natural. It'll be difficult at first, especially with details, but you will get the hang of it and it will definitely give you more of a, um, again, movement in your painting, which can be really nice. With that said, I'm a big believer in breaking the rules of art and doing what works for you. So, if you find you really like holding the brush kind of at the tip, then go for it. You know what, I'm going to do that at different portions in this lesson, and I think that it's important that we find what works for us and what we enjoy, and we make the process as enjoyable as we can. Now I'm going to go back over here and just kind of soften some of these other clouds by throwing in some more of that titanium white, that brighter mixture. Then I'll also work it down a little bit. We also need to move in to our bridge itself. And you can see that these kind of have rounded edges and I'm just painting over them. And I'm doing that and I'm doing that confidently because I'm still able to see my drawing and I know I'm not losing a lot of it in this process. There we go. And I'm just coming back and I'm continuing to add more layers to my sky. And I generally like to paint in a couple of layers. I don't just cover something once and then kind of move on. And that's because the more paint you build up, the more interesting strokes and applications you're going to create. And we're also aiming to cover all of these grid lines and drawings that we have here on the canvas as well. So we're doing a lot. I also like to start and do a lot of layering in the sky to begin with because it's a great place to kind of warm up before you get into the heart of the painting and all of the intricate detailed areas. So if you kind of haven't painted for say a week and you just kind of need to get those motor skills running again, this is a great way of just practicing moving paint around, applying different amounts of pressure, doing different blends. As you can see, we've been painting for a little while now, and what do we have to show for it? A simple gradient with some strokes showing through, but we're really doing much more than that. We're getting better at painting, at controlling our medium, at recognizing how bright different areas are going to be, and it's just such a good practice to get into to kind of warm up in the sky of your painting. There I took the lighter pigment up here, that area is dry so it's not going to blend well at all at this point. So I'm going to try to remix that pigment, kind of throw it back up in there. That worked well, like that. And then I'll continue some of these clouds over here, move them up. They're not too dramatic though. So that's a great start to our sky. Now we're going to move down into this cloud area right here. And I'm going to switch my brush for this process. I'm going to do so to the larger round-headed brush. And I want this because I want the cloud to have softer edges. And that square-headed brush is going to render harder, sharp edges, which will be great for the bridge, not so much for a cloud. So I'm going to take this and the cloud, it's going to look like, it's going to rain at some point, so it's not going to be a wholly bright cloud, which is great because we don't want it to blend in with this bright area of sky. So I'm going to take this brush right here. I'm going to take a little bit of Mars Black, mix that in with the pigment we're currently working with. That way I have a good reference point in relation to how dark it actually is. And then I'm going to head over here 
I'm just going to start painting my cloud. I'm starting on the edges right before I touch paint and then I'll move up into the paint with little swirls and this is going to give us a very soft voluminous look and it's great for creating clouds because this dark pigment is now blending with the lighter pigments that we already have in the sky and we're getting these very soft semi-transparent looking clouds. You can see we're just making the tops of it a little bit more wispy, a little bit less dense, and then as we get towards the middle of the cloud, it's going to get to become that darker pigment again because it's more full. Less light can pass through it, and so it isn't going to be as soft and transparent as these ones that we have right here. You can even take a little bit of that darker pigment and create some smaller little spin-off clouds up here as well. Create a neat little effect. And then back to the darker pigment for the middle area. And you just want to build it up. Make it a nice soft transition. Again, I'm not making a lot of long strokes for these clouds because I do want them to look a little bit more compartmentalized and a little bit more interesting. And you're going to achieve that best when you're doing a lot of different applications and strokes. Some people like to paint in hyperrealism and completely take out the stroke of the painting, but I really like seeing the brush strokes in paintings. I love remembering the medium that it's being created with, especially now in a world where there's just so much digital art and different mediums that can kind of not show what it is. I think it's wonderful that we're still using acrylic paints to this day, even with all of these new mediums, and I kind of like to show that in the painting with pride. So here, you can see I'm just kind of moving along the edges. And if you want the cloud to be a little bit lower, I'm going to take a little bit of a lighter pigment for the sky yet again, and I'll blend those like this. There we go, nice and easy. So up here we have these smaller, very clear, linear clouds, and then down here we have this more voluminous cloud. And having that combination is really what's going to make your painting so much more interesting. You can add more than one cloud, and in doing so you're going to make the painting feel much more alive. Generally when you look up at the sky, you don't notice it, but you see more than one type of cloud. They're kind of layering at different altitudes, and it's great when you can bring that into a painting. So here I'm just kind of working my way from right to left, and that's because I'm painting on the right hand side of my canvas. If I painting on the other side, I would probably move from the other side on, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. I also like to kind of jump around in my painting, that way I don't start subconsciously doing the same techniques too similarly in the same area. If I jump around, I'm kind of forced to move my body in the way my stroke works, and it's kind of a good reset, if that makes any sense. We don't want to fall into habits and make our paintings more mundane by doing the same thing over and over again. We want to consistently be changing our strokes slightly, how we're moving our brush slightly. We want the same foundation of it, but we want to consistently be reinventing it and creating the most interesting piece we can. Something else you can do is I'm sitting down and painting right now. You can physically stand up, kind of take a couple of steps back and make sure that the painting's evolving as the way you want it. When we're so close to the painting, it's easy to zero in on one area and kind of become hyper-focused with it and then not look at it in the context of the rest of the painting and see if it actually matches. So standing up, getting five or six feet away from your painting can be very, very beneficial, and I recommend doing that. Here, 
I'm just kind of continuing. I'm going to take some pure titanium white, which is something I don't normally advise, but I want to put it here to extend the sky down a little bit. And if I were to take a brighter mixture like what I have right here, it would mix with a darker pigment, and it wouldn't actually be any brighter. So I'm taking that pure titanium white in an attempt to make this area actually a similar pigment to that, and you can see that it's working. It's not a pure titanium white on my canvas right now. Instead, it's very much what we had on here before, and that's just because it's blending with the darker pigments that are currently wet on the canvas. And now I'll blend my cloud into that. I'm working from a reference photo roughly, but I'm also just kind of creating it how I want to once I have that initial image on there. I don't want to feel constrained by the reference photo. It's great to give me extra ideas. And it's great to work from reference photos because innately we simplify things in our heads and we come to um, very common structural ideas of how things work and how they're presented. And by looking at a reference photo, you get all of these extra things that you would have missed when you kind of came up with your compressed version of it. And it just makes the painting so much more interesting. So I like to work from reference photos, but I don't like to be constrained by them. So we have one, of course, you can find it up over on Patreon. But once I have this drawing of the bridge down, as far as the clouds go, I'm going to have some fun and do what I like with it. So here, I'm starting to stand up as I'm doing my painting. I'm kind of moving over my drawing of the bridge a little bit. And when you stand up and paint, you're going to lose a little bit of control naturally, but you're going to get a slightly more loose stroke, which is quite nice in clouds. There we go. As you can see though, it's a little bit thin, the paint. You can look right there and right there. It's the same color, but this looks brighter because the paint is a little bit more transparent, it has a little bit more water in it, and because of all of that, it's going to show the canvas through it and look brighter. That's another reason why it's great to paint with achromatic palettes like this. You really get to notice that, where sometimes it's a little bit more difficult when you are working with color. Here, just kind of working on my cloud at the bottom. Again, I'm not too concerned about the bridge as I can still see the drawing for the most part. I'm just trying to play with it and make it a little bit more interesting. There we go. Now, you can see a lot of varying grays in the sky right here, and that's all going to create different levels of depth. So the more subtle you have, the more option you're going to have, and it's important to not just go for the highest contrast. I know that's something that I kind of began doing when I started painting in high school, I suppose. I suppose over a decade ago now, it's always kind of crazy to think of that. But when I began, I started painting everything hyper vibrant and I used very, very um, stark contrasts, very dark darks, very light lights, and it made for very dramatic paintings. But generally, the beauty in the painting is in the subtleties, and it's important that we remember to make those subtleties. So I'm trying to incorporate a lot of grays in this and that's something that achromatic painting also really helps beginners with. It's making sure that you have that subtlety in the painting and it's not just very dark darks, very light lights and this um, very poppy but um, exaggerated painting. And again, I, I'm a big fan of uh, ending talks like this of, you know, we all paint things different ways, we all like to create in different ways. Don't let anyone tell you how specifically to create. Take these ideas as ideas, um, not as you must do it this way. I don't, I don't believe in that in art. And, you know, if you are doing things with very high contrast and that's what you really love doing, then by all means continue doing it. 
With that said, if you do want a little bit more range in your painting, the achromatic palette like this is a great way of kind of isolating these values and making sure that you are incorporating them. Now, right below the cloud, there's going to be a little bit of sky showing through. It's not going to be as bright as this, but it's going to be brighter than the cloud itself. So I'm starting to work this brighter pigment down into the bottom, and then I can reincorporate that dark cloud color right here. And you know what, I might, I might carry it over a little bit in the painting. There we go. Again, I'm leaving lots of brush strokes in this, just because I think it's a really nice look for the cloud. It makes it feel more free, and it makes this, what could be just a line really on the canvas, so much more interesting. Now I'm going to find a slightly softer color for the edges, that way our blend is nice and smooth. There we go. It's also worth noting that as acrylic paints dry, they become a little bit darker, and they're generally fairly transparent, so they show the color underneath them. So consider that while you're painting over different areas from time to time, that you'll probably need to make the pigment a little bit lighter on your palette than you think you want it actually on your painting, because it will probably be a little bit darker on the actual canvas. Here we have some really neat little design work going on at the bottom here. I like that a lot. It's going to be a, a neat extra effect in our sky. Now, it looks like the sky's done, except there are always a couple little areas we might miss, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to touch that up really quickly, kind of try to match a value to that, and it's great that we're matching values because if we were also matching colors, it'd be so much more difficult. Here you can see that what I tried to put on was a little bit darker than what we had right beside it, so I'll take some extra titanium white. I'll try blending that in. Now it's a little bit brighter than what I want. Take a little bit of extra Mars black and just kind of work until we get something nice and similar. Here I'm testing it to the left and the right and it's actually matching quite well now. Throw it in a couple of little lines, make it some extra clouds in here, might as well add some detail. There we go. Now I'm going to take a couple of steps back, really look at the painting, make sure that the clouds are as I want them to be. And it's kind of amazing how almost blue it looks. Some blacks kind of don't make a, a full gray on the, the painting. Um, when they mix with white, sometimes it can lean a little bit more blue depending upon the black that you have. Um, but I like Mars black specifically because a lot of blacks are actually made with uh, charred animal bone and other products like that and I don't like to support that. So that's why we're using the black that we are. But it's important to know that you're probably rarely ever going to get a, a perfect proper gray mixing a white and a black because they do tend to lean one way or the other. With that said, I really like what we have here. I think I'm going to soften the contrast in the cloud a little bit, um, just so that it's not such a punchy sky, that way our bridge can really stand out. And I'll show you how to do that really easily. So I'm going to take some extra titanium white, mix up a brighter gray here, and I'm going to mix it on the pre-existing gray, that way, again, I have a reference of what I'm mixing against, what is already on the canvas. I'm going to take this, start at the bottom of my horizon in an area that can be a little bit lighter, and then I'm going to wet my brush, make my paint a little bit more watery, and then I'm going to run that up over a lot of our other pigment. And because it's so watery, it's going to be semi-transparent. So it's not going to 
completely go over all of the stroke or change the value entirely, it's just going to make a minor difference. It's going to make it a little bit brighter. As you can see, we're taking out all of those harshest values. And instead, we kind of have this nice gray. As you move over to the left hand side, I'll let it be a little bit darker just because we don't have the bridge kind of working through it like we do here. And it's okay if it's slightly softer. But there we go. Now we can begin working on the background here and the land masses. And I'm going to do that with the larger square headed brush because we're going to be working on some of these sharp edges and we're covering a good amount of space. We're also going to be working around, as you can see, all of these sharp edges of the bridge. So if you want to be really detailed, you can work with a slightly smaller brush, but I feel fairly confident in this one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up a little bit of our Mars black, take some of our titanium white, make a nice fairly dark gray. Oh my, I say fairly dark and then, then a big cloud moves over the sun. I'm going to check the camera just to make sure that the lighting's correct. So the sun is back out and we can continue working on the land mass here. So I'm going to take the gray that I just mixed up and I'm just going to apply that initially along the edges of our land masses. And I do the edges first because when we first have paint on our brush, that's when it's going to apply in the most uh, concise, sharp fashion. So by doing this now, I know that I'm going to get those nice clean edges. And as I start to run out of paint, as you can see here, it gets a little bit more gritty. I don't have that nice clean line. And it's, it's important to make sure that you do those extra strokes when you start to run out of paint more in the middle and when you have new paint and your brush is nice and clean that's when you get the edges. So I have some clean paint, I have a damp brush, it's going to help me drag my paint out farther and now I can kind of just work over these edges nice and easy. I'm also jumping around my edges, it doesn't really matter at this point which ones I do first. I'm also going to work around my bridge, but as you can see, I'm starting to run out of paint, so it's getting less easy to use. So I'll switch to some more Mars black, some titanium white. And we'll just cover that up. There we go. Working in between the two legs of the bridge. I'm using the corner of my brush to take care of the really finite details. Again here, working along the edge of the bridge. We have a nice little arch here. Don't need to be perfect. But it helps if you are fairly close. That way, you can see we moved over the leg here, but we still have enough of it to know exactly where it is. And that's really what we want to keep in the end. Now I'm starting to move into significantly smaller areas here on the canvas. So it's important that I start to switch my brush to something more appropriate. So I'm going to clean this one fairly well, as you can see here. And I'm going to switch over to my medium sized square headed brush. This one is an inch instead of two inches. And I'm going to grab more of that paint. I'm just going to continue working on those edges and then filling things in. So it's the same process, but with a slightly more appropriate brush. Now here I'm kind of accepting that I'm going over a lot of the bridge, but I can still see the majority of the line, so it's okay. And I'm going to blend with a very wet brush this mountain up into the fog there. And I'm doing that because it's going to make it look a little bit more like it moves into the distance and give it some extra depth. We can even bring those clouds and fog down into this. Make that really nice too. 
Now I'm never really mixing a lot of paint at once, I kind of go back and I remix my colors a lot, or my values at this point rather, we're not really working with colors yet. And I do that because it helps me get a better understanding of mixing and knowing how much of each pigment I should make for each mix. The more you mix, the more you paint and create those, the better at it you will become, and it'll just make the process so much easier. So here, just continuing to fill in this area. Very glad we switched brushes, it's definitely significantly easier. And I'm leaving out little areas like that right now because I'm going to come back in with an even smaller brush in just a minute. Once we have these medium sized areas blocked in. There we go. And then the mountain kind of gets lost in the distance right there. So we did that, but we did all of this essentially in the same value, and we don't want it to be flat. So I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white, make a slightly brighter mixture, and then I'm going to run this more so around the tops of my mountains to make it look like they have a little bit more light, a little bit more fog, and it's just going to add some easy depth into the painting. We don't want it to be brighter than the sky itself, but there's definitely a nice middle ground. And then we're just going to blend it down with a couple of little strokes, and in the process we'll create a lot of very simple depth in our landscape here. We're just wrapping light around our subject and having it move down. There we go. Much better. You can also blend with your finger as well. A big fan of finger painting. Always have been, always will be. But anyways, that's the start of our nice little uh, background there. Now I'm going to take a hint more Mars Black and I'm going to make the bottoms of these mountains slightly darker. So we made the tops a little bit brighter, we're making the bottoms a little bit darker and that's because the light's just having a harder time getting to the bottom area here because of the shadow of the top. It's also just farther away. So it's another easy way to build some depth in our mountains. And it's very easy to apply again because we're just painting with black, white, and gray. There we go. Now we're going to switch over to our smallest square headed brush. This one is again about half centimeter long. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and damp, that way we have a clean, concise stroke with it. We'll take some of those darker grays and we'll work them into the bridge here. Very detailed areas. I'm using the corner of my brush for the corners in these little triangles and it's going to help me create something that's a little bit more concise. Then I'm moving up some more gray and just making it slightly brighter as I move up in the same way our mountain gets brighter as it moves up. There we go. Again, nice and easy. So from there, we're going to start working on our water, but I want everything to dry fairly well before I do that, that way these pigments don't accidentally mix in with it. So I'm going to give the painting about three or four minutes to dry, acrylic paints are fantastic for dry time, and then we'll get right back into the painting process. This is a great time to clean your brushes and your water as well, because you don't want to have any of that paint kind of stuck in the heart of your brush and then hardening it. 
I'm using Artist Loft brushes here, which are very affordable brushes. They don't cost much at all, but I've had them now for years because I just wash them frequently and I take care of them. It's very easy to do, to easy way to um, extend the life of your brush. Just make sure you're cleaning them well on the outside and then also kind of working the way in as well. So keep that in mind, take a little break, clean everything, and then we'll be right back. So now that we've taken a little break, we've cleaned our water, our brushes, we can come back to this with fresh eyes and a fresh perspective, which again is so useful because it's really easy to zero in on one area and not look at the painting as a whole. So I would advise that frequently throughout the painting process, take a five, 10 minute break, go get some water, clean your supplies, do all of these different little things because it does really help you get back into that painting process with a, a very honest look at the painting. With that said, I'm quite happy with how all of this is turning out, and I'm going to get on to the water. I'm going to begin by taking the largest square-headed brush, I'm going to make sure that it's a little bit damp, again, just to help us blend our paints out farther. And I'm going to start by creating a fairly light color for the water. I want it to be fairly similar to this pigment right here. Generally water is a little bit darker than the sky, but it's going to reflect the light of that sky. So I'm going to begin by mixing up this brighter pigment. And I'm doing it above this previous mixture here because of the time we've uh, taken away. It started to dry and it just won't be good to mix with well at this point. It needs to fully um, dry over before we can start working over that area of the palette again. But I'm just going to take this brighter mixture and I'm going to work it along the edges of the back here, starting on the edges as we always do. I'm going to work it that way, around here, and we can kind of redefine the edges of our landmass through this process, which is nice but I'm just trying to keep it fairly consistent throughout the entirety of it. As you can see, I'll work over my bridge here. Won't worry about that too much. And then I'll start to move out in the painting. Now here I have a little bit of a drawing in purple and that is for the shadow of the bridge. So I'm going to avoid that for the most part and just blend this out on either side. There you could see I really started to run out of paint and it started to get quite transparent and you got to see the tooth of the canvas. Remember that's something we're trying to avoid. So here I'm back being a little bit more careful with additional paint on my brush. You can work some little lines into the shadow though because the water will be moving and it'll make sense in the context of the painting. And I'm also going to move some of this out here, but I'm not going to paint the entire body of water with this pigment because then it would look kind of boring. I'm going to make the edges a little bit darker, give the painting a slight vignette, and if you are unaware, a vignette is simply a darker edge that goes around a painting or photograph that directs the viewer's eye towards the middle because the eye innately goes to the brightest point of any subject. So now I'm going to darken my current pigment a bit, take some Mars black, throw that in there, then I'll work from the corner, the darkest area that we'll have, and I'll start to work inwards. Now I don't have much paint currently on the palette, so I'll mix up some more. Remember, Doing it in small stages ensures that you're continuously mixing paint and you don't mix something once and then kind of forget how to do it. It's much more important when you're mixing color, but it's a great habit to get into even now. So here, just working back and forth, kind of creating these sharp edges between the two to begin with. We will definitely do some softer blends in just a second, but it's a good place to start here. And then of course, I'll use the edge of my brush, the corner, to create some of this nice shadow for our bridge. 
once I have all of the paint kind of on the canvas, still fairly wet because I did use a damp brush, I'm going to head in now and I'm going to do little taps with my brush and blend the two together. And I'm doing this tap and drag motion to give me a slight look here of moving water. It's not going to be too dramatic because all of the water is fairly far away and you're not really going to see much detail in the movement at all. This is just going to give us a subtle little impression of it and make sure that we don't just have two values and hard lines showing up as our water. It's going to make it a little bit more interesting. There we go. And I'm going to move it back into these darker areas as well. And then over to this as well. Very simple technique, but it just adds so much detail so very quickly in the painting. Some areas can be more subtle than others. I'm going back over the hard lines a couple of times just to make sure that it's a nice application. Here you can see we're really softening this area. There we go. It's quite pretty. I like that a lot. Now I'm going to make the edges slightly darker over here because we're going to have this large area of mountain creating a shadow on it. So I'm just going to make that dark pigment that we currently have a little bit brighter, but not as bright as we initially had it. And then I'll create that effect in the water right here, starting on the edge. And then I'll just move it out a little bit. Not too much, just enough to show that there's a little bit of a shadow going on. There we go. Now the water is going to extend to the other side of our bridge, so I'm going to take some very dark pigment and just work that around here. As so. This is probably going to be the darkest pigment we have so far. I might throw a little bit in this corner just to give it some duality and give it another place of reference on the canvas. Generally you don't want to incorporate the starkest value in just one area. The same goes for color, you kind of want to move those things around a little bit and that's an easy way of doing it. Now I'm going to test this color and just see over this leg if we can see the drawing through it. Sometimes if the pigment has a little bit too much titanium white and Mars black, you can't see the drawing. And the backing to all of this bridge here is very dark, fairly, fairly similar to this actually. And I just want to see if when this dries, if I can still see that marking so I know if I can kind of paint over all of this in a similar way. And if I can, that'll make it a lot easier than having to paint very detailed through all of this. Another option is to paint all of it with this pigment, except that we're going to lose the drawing and then go back in and draw it in again, which is, which is a, a whole, um, it's a possibility. It's not a bad thing necessarily because it's more practice at drawing and there are definitely, definitely benefits to it. But at this point, I'm just, I'm trying to see what that looks like there. I think I can see it. And I think I can see it well enough that I'm willing to give it a shot, but if not, I do recognize I can just redraw it on my canvas. So that's actually the next step that I'm going to take here, and that's going to be working on the bridge itself. And I'm going to begin on these longer areas of the bridge because they are a little bit more distinct, they stand out quite well, and it'll just be an easy way to begin very much in the same way we began the painting with the sky because it was a good, easy starting place and it just made the layering process easy. Starting with these larger pillars of the bridge will be the easiest starting place for our bridge. So I'm going to take my smallest square headed brush, the one that is, again, only about half a centimeter long. I'm going to mix up a very dark gray to begin with here. I'm going to take my pinky finger and ground it on the canvas that way it takes shake out of my hand. And then I'm going to find a, a nice area to start. I think I'll start down here. 
and I'll just start working my way up the bridge. And I'm going to work on the edges to begin with, as we always do. And then if I feel like I have some extra paint on my brush before I want to grab new paint, I'll just kind of work inside with that. But I won't, I probably won't go back to the edges now. So I'll grab some water, I'll grab some more paint, and then I'll head back here and continue on the bridge. And it's almost going to be like painting the bridge in a silhouette here to begin. The bridge is fairly dark because of where it is in relation to the light. We're looking at the back of the bridge and the sun is on the opposite side of it. So we are seeing the dark side of the bridge right now. But that just is going to make it look much more impactful. And again, if we painted this with color, it would have been very easy to make it look almost too impactful. And this will help us tone it down a little bit and slowly increase that impact as we want it rather than starting with it and then feeling like we kind of have to work backwards. So here, just mixing up some more of our paint. I'm allowing the side here to be a little bit brighter because it's going to get a little bit of light from there. So I'll mix in a little bit of titanium white as I'm working on this edge. And you see we got a little bit of a brighter gray. It's still a dark gray, especially in relation to everything else. But it does have a contrast with the mid and back portion of the bridge. And that's really what we're looking for to show depth here because depth is shown, again, through how dark and light subjects are. Just trying to wrap that rat light around our subject to show the darker and the lighter areas. There we go. Going back, doing this a couple times, You may need to go over an area once or twice, especially when we're mixing with this much water, because while the water makes it easy so we can drag the paint out farther, it also thins the paint, which means sometimes we have to go back in and do a couple extra layers, which isn't really a bad thing. Again, it's more time painting, but we're here because we love it, and it'll make us stronger painters. There we go. You can see that the bridge is really coming along here. I'm so grateful to have this smaller flat-headed brush. It's just making this part of the process so easy. Still bracing my hand on the canvas with my pinky finger, taking that shake out. And I'm holding my brush very close to the bristles right now because it's going to help me be so much more detail-oriented. But again, if you feel like you want more movement in the painting, hold the brush like this, apply it like this. If you do it for the whole painting, you'll get a bit more of a, a loose technique through it and it'll look quite neat, really well. Here I'm adding a little bit of a protruding piece to these connecting areas of the bridge. I'm going to give it a little bit of extra dimension Sun just went out, so I'm going to check the camera again. Okay, all things look quite well. This is good. This is going really well today. Love this. I, I did a painting yesterday of uh, some lilacs in the sunset, and it's doing really well. And then I, I exclusively painted natural light, so the sun would go behind a cloud for 30 seconds, and then it would come out and go behind a cloud and come out, and the lighting in the camera just didn't work. So I'll have to redo that painting, unfortunately, but I feel like we've been getting very lucky today with it. And I'm incredibly grateful for days like today where the weather can be consistent. Doesn't need to be a sunny day, could be a cloudy day, 
could be a snowy day. It just needs to kind of pick one for natural lighting and painting. But anyways, here I'm kind of jumping over to this smaller bridge piece. And I'm doing that just to kind of continue to have fun with the painting. Again, I'm not one to start working on one area and just kind of see it to the finish. I like to make it a little bit more of a fun process, work in different areas and then kind of go back. I think that it makes the, the process more entertaining, but I also think that again, it makes sure that you're switching up your process a little bit, your stroke a little bit, and that you'll get a, a better painting for it. Here you can see that the bridge pigment that we're using really is the darkest pigment in the whole painting because it's standing out against the darkest areas of our mountain down here, which is great. That's exactly, exactly what we wanted. I'm going to make this whole bridge though, or this whole piece, a little bit brighter. So I'm going to mix some extra titanium white into our current mixture. I'm going to go over what we just did. And I'm going to do that because it's a bit farther away. So it's going to have more atmospheric light on it. And it's going to be therefore brighter than this one, which is closer to us where we can see more of the innate coloring. As subjects move farther away in the painting, they get much more reflected light from the water, the sky, everything. And their color isn't as it is, as we would perceive it in the foreground. So it's important that we keep that in mind in this value painting process and that we are also just trying to make sure that we're keeping all of those extra steps here. It's so much easier to put them on the canvas with this. We can see obviously that this is now darker than this and that's exactly what we want. Be a little bit harder with color. So that is a, a great start to that little guy. Need to paint the feet on the bottom. Should be fairly easy. You can do that with two little rectangles, just like that. Then the connecting piece to the mountain itself. To the hill itself, I suppose. Not, not quite a mountain. Um, maybe it would like to be called a mountain, though. Maybe, maybe one day when it grows up, it can be a, a big, strong mountain. Um, with that said though, I'm just going back and I'm brightening this slightly more, especially at the top where it'll have more light. And that looks quite nice, I like that a lot. Now, I'm going to move back over to this one once. Again, I checked the camera, the sun went away, and wow, that looks significantly more blue when the, the sun isn't out. Wow, that's that's quite incredible. I'm going to, I think, take a little bit of a break now um, until the sun comes back and then we will continue painting the bridge. I just don't want to kind of uh, hinder the painting process or the teaching process by you seeing different values and colors. So I'll see you in just a minute. The sun seems to be back, so we're going to continue the painting process. I'm going to jump back into this piece right here. So I'm going to take some of my titanium white, mix it over into the darker gray that we have here, create a nice lighter gray, and I'm going to paint the sides of the bridge with this. And you're also going to see those sides right here as well. So we're sharing that same value and it's going to get lost in different areas. It'll be very similar to portions of the clouds for sure, but that's okay. It's going to be painted with a different color later on than the clouds, so it will still stand out to a point. But this is just a very natural way of going about it. Working my way on all sides, just like that. These are still going to protrude a little bit more, so I'm painting them outwards slightly. And then we can even take some very bright gray, at least in relation to what we have, 
and apply that a little bit more to the top where it'll be getting slightly more light. There we go. Slowly coming along, turning into a painting we can really love. I'm also going to take the corner of my brush and start applying it to the undersides of these arches as well as they'll catch a little bit of reflected light. And then I'll run that back up. Might even take a little bit of it and yet again brighten the bridge that we have in the background here. We don't want to brighten it too much. You can see that I just added quite a lot, but we can tone that back down with a little bit of that Mars black. We won't, need, we won't need much because it's such a strong pigment, but there we go. Really looks like it fades into the distance now, which I like a lot. I'm going to take a little bit of this extra lighter gray mixture and just build in some details here that we had drawn in before. These are all just slightly protruding pieces that'll catch a little bit of light on the side. And then the top will also as well. There we go. Quite nice. And just in time for the heat sun to go away again. You know, yesterday I think I got a little frustrated with it and how it was changing, but you know, it, it, it's a part of nature and it, it's something that shows up even in paintings like this. It's not a fully uh, bright sky, it's not a fully cloudy sky, it's this really beautiful mix and something to be appreciated. It's also neat how it lets us see our canvases in colors and in different ways as well. So looking at this with a new perspective, you know what, I'm, I'm looking in the viewfinder, the values are all still the same, the color is different, but that's okay because we're not actually working with color yet. So I'm actually going to continue even through these slightly cloudy sessions. You can still see the value which is the most important thing at this point and I think we'll still be able to teach a great lesson here. So I'll be more careful when we start working with color but until then we will continue. So I'm going to take some Mars Black, move that out here on the palette, take a hint of Titanium White, mix that in there as well. And I'm going to continue these down here now. And as you can tell, this pigment, it's a little bit brighter than what we have up there. It's blending in more with the hills there. So I'm going to take a little bit more Mars Black and just darken that. It's all about trial and error. Wonderful thing about acrylics is just how malleable they are. If you don't like something, you can paint over it. And if it's a little bit too covered in paint, that's okay. If you wait five to 10 minutes, it won't be, it'll be dry. And that's fantastic. Speaking of fantastic, the sun is back out. You can probably see this without that kind of blue filter that it likes to create in the shade. And we can get back to painting this naturally. So here I'm working on all of the fun architecture in the bridge, these nice little X's here. Moving my hand about to create them. I'm going back and forth kind of in the same way that you would if you were doing a drawing, which is kind of fun. I think it's something that a lot of us are used to because a lot of us do more drawing than we do painting. Oh, and, and there goes the sun again. Well, it was nice while it lasted. I'm going to mix up a, a lighter pigment here. I'm going to work that onto the sides. Bring a little bit up here just to make sure that it's nice and close. And then I'll do a little bit on the bottoms of these beams as well, because we'll still see it. Here we'll see it on the top because of the perspective change. There we go. Really neat. 
Now I'm going to move into this bottom area, and this area, it's going to get shadow from the rest of the bridge, so it's getting much, much darker. So I'm going to take that Mars Black and I'm going to start with a, a fairly dark pigment for the back here. It might even be a little bit darker than what we used for the rest of the bridge, and that is not a bad thing at this point. There we go. Going to make a slightly lighter version for this middle piece, just to create some extra detail. And then I'm going to go back to very dark for this bottom brick. Again, this smaller square headed brush is perfect for these scenarios. Does a really, really nice job. Now we're going to work on the sides of them, which is going to be slightly brighter. So I'll take that titanium white, work it in, work it up. Again, bring it up here as well, just to make sure it's nice and cohesive. And the more layers we apply like this, the thicker the paint will get, the nicer it will look. The top of this little piece is going to be a little bit brighter too, as it'll get light directly on it. And then the back and bottom of that rounded piece is going to be much darker. So I'll start with the sides, make sure they're nice and clean. Do the bottom, make sure that line is nice and clean. Might extend it out a little bit farther actually. Make it a bit of a stronger visual. It's okay to take artistic liberties and change the painting if you think it'll improve it, make it better, make it more of what you want it to. There we are. Now we have a lot of light pigments kind of in this area, so creating these dark pigments is a little bit more difficult for me right now. So I'm just going back over with a couple layers of this darker pigment until we get it to what we actually want it to be. Don't get frustrated though if it isn't initially exactly what you want. It's about taking your time, finding the right, the best way of going about it. I'm going to take a little bit of extra titanium white and just fix up this area here. Make that nice and round again. Just like that. Now I'm going to take a couple of steps back from my painting, give it a, a good little look. And I think that's coming along really nicely. This is one of those where I'm painting it with an achromatic palette and I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe this doesn't need any color. It's looking really nice like this. And, and sometimes a black and white painting is just a really nice thing to have. So it's something to consider if you come to the end of this and you just love the way it looks and you say, you know what, I don't, I don't think this needs color. That's, that's totally okay. Now I'm going to take some titanium white, mix up an even brighter gray yet again. I'm just going to do a little bit of a highlight E here. You can see it right there on the edge. This is just going to be a little bit of a, a glistening effect on some of the steel and metal. It's making it stand out slightly more. Looks quite nice though. There we go. Might even add hints of it at this back one as well. Perfect. So from there, we're going to move on to something kind of new in the painting, and that's these beams right here. And I'm going to make those very dark. It's going to be almost silhouetted, so I'll take a lot of Mars Black, a little bit of Titanium White, still just mixing in those same areas that I was so that I can compare values. 
and then I'm going to apply a very minimal amount of pressure as I create these because the more pressure you add with your brush, the more the bristles will expand and the larger the stroke you'll create, but I want these to be incredibly small. I'm also going to go back for water a couple of times in this because the water will help that paint glide on the canvas really nicely and help me create those very thin, perfect edges. There we go. I'm going to do so over on the other side too. These ones are even farther away, so they're smaller. Really subtle. There's some at the back. It's a very cathartic thing to do. Just these beautiful, clean lines connecting the bridge. There we go. Now, I'm going to move on to these ones in the foreground. They'll be a little bit bigger, but they're still nice and small, so we want to take that same level of cautiousness continue to make them as nice as we can. There we are. Going back over it a couple of times there just to make sure that it's nice and stark. And then it's a little bit bigger in the foreground because as it moves into the background, it'll get smaller and smaller because of perspective. It itself isn't getting smaller, but it's perceived as smaller. And it's little details like that that'll make the painting quite special. There we are. Now, yet again, I'm going to stand up, take a couple steps back, get a, a good view of it, make sure that I'm happy with how it's all going, make sure that the line work and the edging is as thick as I'd like it to be, that the values are all as I'd like them to be. And I'm quite happy with all of it at this point. With that said, our brushes have been wet for a little while now, and it's just about time to go and clean those, clean our water, come back, and then be fairly fresh and ready to tackle this, again, very intricate part of the bridge. Um, if, you, if you've forgotten and you are getting to this, remember, you can use the digital sketch. It does help a lot. I use it. I use the, the grid and... Um, I just find it's a much easier way to get all of this detail in the right spot. You can also use it as a traceable, uh, use a projector and all those different things. So just something to consider before we get into this very detailed area. With that said, I'm going to take a five minute break, let what I have on the canvas dry, clean my water, clean my brushes, and then get right back into it. For this next part of the bridge, I'm going to take my medium sized square headed brush and this one again, it's about a centimeter. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and damp. I'm going to mix up a nice dark gray and we're going to paint the inside of all of this. And I'm going to accept that if I need to redraw it, I shall redraw it. But this I think essentially just needs to happen. And then from there we can go in and we can paint our highlights and our detail over top of it. So I'm just going to cover the majority of it. I'm using a fair bit of water, which is going to make the pigment slightly more transparent, which is quite good in this case. That way we can still see some of that detail. And I'm going to spread it out to a good extent as well, because that is also going to allow us to see more detail through the pigment. The more you spread the paint, the more transparent it will be. So we're just going to do 
a fair bit of that in this one. It'll make the paint slightly less dark than it normally is, but that isn't a bad thing either. We don't want it to be too, too dark. Painting in the little brace in the bridge there. Now I'm moving on to this area in the foreground. Here you can see I'm using the edge of the brush to create that nice sharp line. And then I'll just kind of scrape the rest of that paint in a little bit. Again, if it isn't a perfect coverage, I'm okay with that. So, now we're going to move on to this area as well. I'm going to grab some more paint. Titanium white, Mars black, make up a fairly dark mixture. I'll start on this large block and I'll kind of fill that in. And this is going to help me get a lot of that first amount of paint off. And I'm doing this specifically because I want to get that dense paint on the canvas. And then once it's there, I can kind of move into the rest of the areas with a slightly more thin paint where I'll be able to see through it a little bit better. Again, if I can't see through it by the end, it's not the end of the world. We can just go back in and draw this out, but it would make it a little bit easier if I could see through it. Here I'm trying to go back over all of the white on the edges that I may have missed in either of the applications, whether it be the background or now the one in the foreground. There we go, coming along really nicely. And from the looks of things, I can still see through it to a good point. That will change as it dries, acrylics do tend to dry a little bit darker, and so that's what I'm going to let it do right now. That was a very quick step in this painting process, but a necessary one. When we come back, we will see how dark it actually is and if we can see that drawing through it. But I want to let it dry entirely before I continue, especially because if I started applying paint to it right now, it would just blend with this very watery paint and we wouldn't really get the pigments that we create on the palette. We'd be applying paint to mix paint rather than applying paint to have that paint show up on the canvas. So I'm going to take another five minute break and then we'll be right back to hopefully paint some details and highlights on this bridge. But again, if you painted it a little bit um, dark and it's still wet, you can take your brush, take some water, just kind of work it over and blend that paint through more. You can pick up paint with your fingers with a cloth. Um, or again, you can simply redraw it. And if it's almost a black and you need to redraw it and you're like, how do I do that? My fine tip Sharpie is a uh, black or my colors, they, they don't work over such a dark pigment. You can use um, a fine tipped uh, white woodless colored pencil or you could use a piece of chalk, uh, neither of which should dilute the pigment that we'll be applying. So just two ideas if you find that it got a little bit too dark and you need to redraw it. With that said, I'm going to wait about five minutes and see what I'm going to do. We are now back. This has dried and I actually got very lucky. I can see through it just a little bit, just enough to create the details that I want to without having to redraw it. So that's what I'm going to continue doing. Again, if yours didn't show up, I do recommend redrawing it with a white colored pencil or perhaps a, a piece of chalk, something in that manner that will work over the almost black pigment. With that said, I'm gonna take my smaller square headed brush. I'm gonna take some titanium white, move that out here on the palette, grab just a hint of Mars black. I don't want much at all. Creating some real highlights here. And I'm going to start 
applying the highlights to the edges of the bridge in the same way that I did the edges of these higher areas. So I'm going to pick a couple that are really noticeable, starting with this one. And I will start painting this with this small square headed brush. Using this one still because it just it's very detail oriented. Does it cover as much as the other two? No, but we don't really need to at this point. We're not covering super large areas. We've committed to doing the painting, to taking our time. So you know what, spending a little bit of extra time here is okay. And we'll get the best results with this brush. I'm also not going to worry about making all of my strokes perfectly straight in this. Again, very much like the liking for brush strokes. I, li I like to see little imperfections in this. I do like to still see the brush stroke. I don't want it to be a perfectly hard line like you can create kind of in, in Photoshop and things like that. I want it to be much more natural. And I want to see little bits of that paint kind of sticking out in different areas. So here, I'm just going over the larger areas of the bridge that are kind of protruding and filling those in. There we go. You can see that the blacks, or almost black, is showing through to a good extent. It isn't this perfectly pristine white, it isn't this wholly opaque color. You do get to see portions of the pigment underneath it showing through, and that's also just a, a nice little effect. It's going to create some extra detail and personality in the painting. That said, I'm going back around to the top where it'll be a little bit brighter and I'm doing some additional layers because it'll build up light on top of light and it'll just look a little bit brighter than the rest of that area of the bridge. So, we want some areas to be a little bit more transparent than others. Then I'm going to work on this little brace here that we have in the middle of the bridge because it's another semi-large area. And then it's going to catch a little bit of light underneath. There's another one right over here. Catch a little bit of light underneath. This pigment's fairly bright, so I'm going to throw a bit of it on the edge of my bridge yet again. Slowly just building that up throughout the painting process. There we go. Turning out quite well. Now, take some extra titanium white, hint of Mars black, just a hint. If I get too much, I'm putting it on my palette elsewhere. Now I'll create this beam that kind of runs its way through the entirety of the bridge. Starting here closest to us, and then I'm just making this tiny little stroke as we continue on. Again, it's going to be a little bit bigger in different areas just because we're allotting room for a little bit of inconsistency. And then as we get closer and closer to the back of the painting, starting to run out of paint on my brush, but that's okay because it's getting smaller and smaller. We're not going to see this as it gets to that far away. So that actually worked perfectly. I also love this little part of extra white kind of at the top and bottom. It almost looks like a sheen on the metal, which is a nice little touch, which wasn't intentional, but I certainly take and appreciate. Now we'll do the same for the top. Just kind of gliding my way across the canvas. My hand is touching the canvas slightly to give me a little bit of precision to take off that shake and just to make sure I'm moving in the right ways. Then I'm going to do another little one right under it after I thicken the foreground a little bit. We want the foreground to be a little bit bigger because again, it's closer to us and it will be perceived as bigger. The same goes for this bottom one which we can actually touch up a little bit more. There we go. Now I'll grab some more paint. 
and work in the second prominent beam right under the first. And I'm taping this loosely from the reference photo. I'm not going to incorporate everything because it's such a detailed bridge and photo. I just kind of want to take the main elements and create the essence of it in short. I feel like we're doing quite a good job of just that. I made the white there a little bit too long, so I went back and I just kind of fixed that up. Nice and easy to do. I'm also going to make that a little bit darker right before all of these braces. That way it looks like it's kind of going underneath it and that these have a back to them. Now we'll get some more titanium white. Kind of find other interesting ways of doing this. Now I think we'll work on the vertical applications. So I can still see my drawing, just following it to the best of my ability. I may change things here and there, not too concerned. Remember, even when you're painting detailed subjects, painting still meant to be fun. Don't get too worked up about it. You can always paint over things if you don't love them. Here you can see I'm just progressively working more and more to the side. You can start at the top or the bottom. At some point though, it's important that we do go back and grab some extra paint. There you go. You can see the contrast of new paint to old paint. And you know, we'll go over that a couple of times just to make sure that these have a, a nice application as well. Now that I've made five or six strokes, you can see the difference between this and this. There we go. Again, for these, I'm using a very minimal amount of pressure. The more pressure we add, the larger the stroke's going to be. We really don't want a big stroke for this area. Now I have little bars that are kind of working their way back and forth between these larger beams. So we'll just paint those in. Really easy just connecting the tops of these to the bottoms of these. There we go. And that actually is something that persists through the rest of this. So we're going to have all of these little vertical strokes going back. And as we get farther and farther away, they're going to get smaller and smaller, closer and closer together. And then around this point, we're going to lose them completely. And I'll show you what we'll do from there. First, we'll continue this. So, it's a fun little pattern, up and down, lots of little triangles. I'm going to be much more loose with these if I don't get from the top to the bottom wholly. That's okay, I don't want it to be too standout-ish. I want it to be a little bit more implied at this point. And you'll really see what I mean as we get back here. So now, as we get to the end, I'm skipping areas. And then instead of doing the vertical ones, I'm going to be doing just these triangular pieces here and there. I'm going to be doing less of them, and then it's just kind of a tap in one way or the other as we get farther back here. At which point, it's just an impression. Then, because these stand out a little bit more than the ones in the foreground, I'm going to go back over them one more time, make it a little bit more thick, a little bit more prominent, 
and this is just going to ensure that the depth in the painting works well. This is again is why we're painting with the achromatic palette to make sure that our values are the most stark in the foreground and that everything's just working as it needs to. Now we can come down and work on this nice little arch that we have here. Arches are a little bit difficult with our movement, but we'll make it in a couple of nice little strokes. Again, make another one right here. So far, so good. And then we'll have it expand and be a little bit bigger over here because it's closer to us. Then, yet again, we have those fun little beams that connect everything. I'm going to make the beams that are closest to us over here a little bit larger than the rest. So we're just going to go over these again. And you can see that I'm slowly building it up. I didn't initially make those much larger. It's something that I wanted to do everything else first and just kind of gauge the sizing that I wanted and then come back and do it because it's so much easier to make things wider than it is to make them smaller again. So it's kind of just a cautionary way of going about it. Then underneath, I'm going to make a little bit of a gray here because it's not going to get as much light, but there is going to be some slight detail. We have the other side of this bridge. And then I'm just throwing in some random little supports and beams. And then this, of course, is presented on the other side. So I'll paint that in like that. Then I'll take some really bright gray and just to touch this up, I'll add a little bit more to our sides here. That way that'll pop nicely when we get to it with our color. Add a little bit more to these. And now finally, we're just going to touch up a couple of these beams that are going down from the larger ones. And I can still see them fairly well with the uh, pen that I did, but I don't want them entirely to be done in pen. It can be kind of a funny mixed media, not funny, fun mixed media uh, thing where you have the, the pen in there too, but I'm just going to take a couple of them and create some of these longer strokes. That will start, and then I'll stop them, and then I'll start, and then I'll stop them. And it'll just look a little bit more natural. It'll look like some of them are getting caught in the light so you don't see them as it kind of reflects back, where others are this darker pigment. I'm not going to do all of them, otherwise it might look a little bit too messy on the canvas. So I'm just picking some that I think look a little bit more prominent. And again, I'm, I'm just kind of picking some areas that I feel are a little bit open and could use the extra detail. It's a very quick way of adding a lot of extra detail. It's just a lot of vertical lines. As I get farther and farther back in the painting, you can see that I'm losing paint on my brush. They're getting significantly less stark, and that's actually a really nice effect because it's not going to look as high contrast back there. It's important to note that when you're doing these paintings, generally, the background is a lot more subdued and the foreground has much more intense values. The darkest of the darks, the lightest of the lights. And that's why achromatic painting helps us figure that out and allocate that. So all of this, it's kind of a mix of different grays, but here it's almost a black and almost a white, and that's because it's so close and it's our main subject and we really want it to pop. 
Back here it has a lot of atmospheric coloring on it, so everything's kind of under the same haze of whatever color that is, and that isn't so much the case in the foreground where we see the innate coloring. So just things to kind of consider in the painting process. Now I'm going to stand up, take a couple of steps back, take a good look at the painting, make sure it's the way I want it before I start adding color. And you know what? I think I want to darken this again. We kind of kept making it brighter and brighter and I liked it more and more, but looking at it now in context with everything else, I do think I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'll just mix up a bit of a darker gray quickly here. And then I'll fill in everything that we did before. And you can see so, so much quick movement in this paint now. Took us a lot longer to paint it the first time and that's because as we do this, we just get better. And we, as you paint things more and more, we get more quick at them and it just becomes a much more natural process. We've been painting now for around probably two hours. And so things like that, which were initially a little bit harder because we were getting our motor skills back is much, much easier. So that is great. That is really what I want it to be at that point. I'm going to quickly switch over to this medium round brush, make sure that it's nice and damp. I'm going to mix up a color in the sky like that. So I'll do that over our palette, same areas, give it a little test. It's very close, it could be a little bit brighter. And then I'm going to work a little bit of a mist over some of these hills in the background. I'm going to blend it out with my finger so that it's semi-transparent and so that it's very apparent that it's um, just a, a mist. Here I have a lot of water in my brush and I'm actually using a little bit of a wash, a glaze if you will, and I'm just applying this slightly lighter pigment back over the canvas, brightening these areas a little bit. Just trying to tone down the values, make it look a little bit more gray and a little bit less black. And that's going to help build depth as well. It'll push it farther back in the painting. Now I'm going to step back, look at it again. And I think that worked out really, really well. So the next step is to let it dry entirely, completely. It needs to be 100% dry before we go to the next step. And then we're going to do some glazing. So right now, it's important that we let this dry. We clean our palettes so that it's fresh and ready for some color. We'll get clean water, we'll clean our brushes, and then we'll go back to the painting and we'll do some really exciting applications. So let's do that and I'll see you in just a second. So we are now back. Our canvas is entirely dry and as you can see, we have some different colors going on here on the palette. Firstly, I have a light blue permanent, which is right here. I have a cerulean blue hue, which is right here. I have the Mars black, the titanium white. I have a cadmium red light hue, which you can see right there. And then I have a burnt sienna, which is right there. These are what we're going to use to paint the color into this picture via glazing. And for those of you who are new to the technique, glazing is essentially adding a color to a painting without distorting the line work or value. So we're essentially painting over everything, but keeping all of the paint and the design and the drawing that we have on there. And we're doing that very easily by just doing with very wet paint. A paint that is very transparent, it's not very opaque at all, and we make it very transparent via mediums, or in this case, water. I like to use water because it's a free medium for most of us. It's uh, plentiful and it does just a, a good job. It's also great because you get much more in tune with using water, which we use through the entirety of our lesson. So the more you use it, the better you'll understand it and the better it'll help the entirety of all of your paintings. So that's what we're going to be using here. I'm going to begin in the background as I always do. I'm going to begin with my larger square headed brush because it can take a lot of paint going to make sure that it's nice and damp. I'm going to grab a little bit of our cerulean blue, move it out here on the palette, grab some extra water, 
move that into it and I'll mix it up until it's more of a watercolor consistency than it is a acrylic consistency. And then I'll take it and I'll just start applying it to our canvas, as you can see here. You can also throw little bits of titanium white or even a hint of Mars black into it. And this is going to gray it down a little bit if you don't want that very vibrant blue. And it's also going to help thicken the pigment a little bit. So you see when we applied it at first, you can kind of see it sinking into all of the little granular areas of the painting. This will help condense it, keep it together a little bit. But that is just going to be a part of the painting. Now I'm going to move it down into our cloud over here on the left hand side, the right hand side it'll be a bit more warm. But I'm going to keep working it over until it's a little bit more consistent in application. I'm also going to go over parts of my bridge as you can see here. But I'm going to avoid the lighter areas of my bridge. So I'm just moving it about as it dries until I get really what I'd like here. I'm going to take some more, add it up here in the painting. I'm also going to use a little bit of our light blue permanent. It's a bit of a thicker pigment, so it'll keep the paint together a little bit better. When you paint though with this technique, you kind of accept that you're going to get a brush stroke in your painting and it isn't going to be this perfectly smooth thing, instead it's going to be this really nice neat effect that does look more like paint. Here I'm going to work my way along the edge, blend it out as you can see. But I want this area that connects the sky to the cloud to be a bit brighter, to still be that nice white. So I'm going to take some titanium white and I'm just going to mix that in with everything that we're currently doing. As you can see the value staying quite similar. I'll do that over here as well. It'll be a little tricky working in and around our bridge here, but again I'm okay with a little bit of a brush stroke and it's going to give it a fairly neat effect. You can even blend this back down over the cloud, brighten it up a little bit. Just like that. I'm going to take some more titanium white, brighten up the area closer to the bridge, and again, almost blend it down into the cloud a little bit. But it's all so much easier to add this color and to do this because of our backing, because we have that nice achromatic under layer. When we add in the titanium white we do change the value a little bit. But that's okay, it just gives us a chance to adjust it, and that isn't a bad thing. Here I'm just cleaning up some of my edges a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to move into the cloud area, and I want that to be done with more of a pinkish orange, so I'll take some of our cadmium red light hue, a little bit of our titanium white, Make it a little more peachy. And then I'll work this over our clouds. The more layers you do, the more prominent it will become. You can add a little bit of our burnt sienna in there, a little bit of our titanium white. As you can see, it's changing the value slightly, but we're not really losing any of our line work or the variations in tone. Here, bringing it around the bridge, and then back into this area. 
which I'll start blending it with the blue and we'll create something nice and cohesive. Blend it up a little bit. And I'll also blend it over the hills as well. Here blending up into the blue, giving us that very natural look. There aren't really any hard lines here. Just color blending into color. You can see we're losing portions of our bridge in the back, but that's okay. We can always go back and repaint that, or let it be kind of lost in that semi-hazy background, which is neat. Now I'm going to take a step up, take a couple of steps back, look at the painting, and I think I want it to be a little bit more pink. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over to my paints, going to grab, where is it? Primary red. Throw this on the palette here. Just a little bit, we don't need much. I'll mix this with what we had and a little bit of titanium white. I don't want it to be all pink, so we'll just add the pink as a secondary wash. And you can do multiple washes and just continue to combine colors. It's a, a really fantastic technique and process. So here I'm just finding the consistency and the mix that I want. And now we'll throw that on. Again, working it over my mountains, hills, if you will. And I'm allowing the pink to go over the bridge here in the foreground as well just because it's a really nice color and we want our bridge to be more of that reddish, pinkish brown anyway. So we're being very loose, we're just doing lots of blending here, letting it all kind of just come together at this point. There we go. Throwing a little bit more pink over on that side, and we can turn it into more of a purple too by adding some blue. Continue to just diversify the color in our painting. Adding the blue at the bottom to give it a little bit of a darker, again, more purple look. All about finding that balance. Now I'm going to head into the water with more of our pinkish orange. You can build these really interesting colors with glazing. There's just so much happening. It'd be really difficult to match while painting normally. And then we'll get some purple for these darker areas. Then I want a little more orange in it, in the brighter spots. There we go. And now we can actually paint the bridge. And I want to do that with a mixture of the cadmium red light hue, a little bit of our burnt sienna, a little bit of our titanium white. The titanium white is going to take the saturation down a little bit. I didn't want it to be too, too saturated. But then we're just going to layer this on top of all of our bridge.
Again, I'm being fairly loose, just letting the glaze act naturally. It's very much like painting with watercolor, in that when you're painting with watercolor, you're surrendering a lot of your control, and you're just letting the painting kind of paint itself. And it's making a lot of decisions as it's moving, and you get much better paintings, I think, when you let it do, let it kind of take control. And we're doing something very similar here. So I'm just moving this paint over the entirety of the bridge. You can see that it's much brighter in the areas that we painted to be much brighter. And then it's a little bit darker in the darker areas. And it's just so easy because now we're literally just painting with color, creating this really interesting, vibrant piece so simply. And again, you get a, a bit of a looser look to your painting when you paint it like this. But if you're like me and you really appreciate brush stroke and all of that, and the medium that is acrylic, then I think you'll be very happy. I'm taking off some of the color with my finger, as you can see, just to take a little bit of that brightness away from the darker values. There we go. I'm going to take a little bit of our orange and burnt sienna, tap that onto some of these railings, just the big dominant ones. It's really easy once we have them drawn on. There we go. Now I'm going to switch to the smaller square headed brush and I'm going to put some blue and a little bit of our primary red together, make a bit of a darker purple with a little bit of Mars black. And I'm just going to paint in some of the darker areas here in this bridge. And the blue next to the orange is really going to make the orange pop because blue and orange are complementary colors and when they're next to each other they really stand out. So by adding in this little detail by just going in and painting around these little bars, you can see it's really quick now because you've been doing this for so long, we make it really pop and, and create this nice effect. I'm not too worried about detail. Again, I'm not aiming for hyper-realism or really even realism to any point. I, I want it to look like a painting and I want it to just capture the feeling more than anything. I, I think that's really, for a lot of us, the most important part about it. There we go. Coming along really nicely. I'm going to take a little bit of our orange and just work that down into here with a couple little horizontal strokes. Working with the smaller brush now, we can incorporate some extra detail in this, which is really nice. We can also go back and take some of those darker colors and add a little bit of extra contrast to our bridge again, if we want it, we don't have to. Here I'm just making it pop a little bit more though. You can even take some gray and desaturate it if you'd like. It's all about finding the balance that you yourself want in your painting. There we go, that really, really stands out now. And if you find you make it too dark, then you can just glaze over it again with a, a lighter pigment. And it's this really wonderful process of just kind of moving back and forth with it all. Here I'm cleaning up some of the orange that kind of came down from the bridge. Some of it does tend to drip. I just cleaned it up with a little bit more of that darker purple mixture. It's 
so malleable. Now I'm going to stand up for a second, take a look at the painting, see how we can improve it, whether it be through realism or just continuing to make it more interesting, however we would like. And I think I want some thick pigment here in the foreground via texture. And texture can be difficult to achieve with acrylic paints because they are innately so thin. But if you take just a lot of paint like that, a lot of paint like that, we'll mix them up. And then you take it on your brush and you apply it, but you don't apply any real pressure. You can get this very thick application. And then as you can see, I'm blending it down and it gets less and less thick. That's because I'm just placing pigment on the canvas to begin with. And then once I start to run out of that pigment, it blends and I get these strokes instead. But what that does, very simply, is it places pigment on and it doesn't blend it. As soon as you start blending your paint, it's mixing and it's becoming semi-transparent. But if it's just placed, if it's just tapped on, then you don't have that issue. Want a little bit of titanium white in there to desaturate it a little bit. There we go. And now you can see I'm really getting loose with my brush strokes. Just trying to capture that light on this. Not worried about the line work anymore. I did such precise line work in the beginning so that we could take these liberties now. If we kind of went at it with such a loose approach from the beginning, we wouldn't have this structure and this backbone to work off of. So it's important to know when to break the rules and when not to. And I found if I do a, a relatively detailed beginning to the painting, then at the end here, I can really play with it and have fun with color and all of that. There we go. Continuously going back and playing with this big piece. It's quite important as it is really the centerpiece of the painting. And then you can also take darker colors like your dark purple, which we'll mix up a little bit more of. If there's cerulean blue, primary red, Mars black, a little bit of titanium white. There we go. We can work those strokes into the water as well. Just build up some extra detail. Mix the color into other areas of the painting so that it's not just in one. There we go. You can even work in the shadow here again. This is a much more loose part of the painting process. It's less tutorial and just kind of showing you all of the different things you can do with yours. How you can have fun with it. Make it your own. Personalize it. Use the colors that you love. Create the mood that you want to make. Take a little bit more of that extreme, highlighted, beautiful cadmium red and burnt sienna and I'll throw that up onto the side here. Maybe hints of it on the railing. There we go. And if you add too much that you don't like, just take your wet brush Add some water and scrape it off. Really quite easy. Now I'm going to take another step up. See what I think. After looking at it, I, I really like how the glazing worked, but I think we're, we're going to add an extra element to this painting, and that is Impressionism. So we started to do that a little bit here with all of our loose strokes, and I want to continue that in the rest of the painting in different areas, just because I, I think that 
we've taken this from a place in the black and white form that was more close to a photograph and it was fairly grounded and then as we added more and more layers of glazing we made it this interesting thing that was more about the mood and the feeling and that's really what I want this piece to be about. So I'm going to take some of our cerulean blue, a little bit of our light blue permanent, a little bit of our titanium white makes up a nice thick bright blue and I'm going to throw some strokes of that in the sky in areas where there is that blue and I'm also going to take a little bit of it and just throw it about the canvas maybe a little bit of a highlight on our bridge here just move it about now I'm going to take some of our burnt sienna mix it with some titanium white make it nice and thick and I'm making the pigments nice and thick for this impressionistic look because I want it to work on top of the paint that we already have and not necessarily blend with it in the same way the glazing did. I want this to really pop. So here I'm just throwing on these very distinct bright highlights on the bridge where we're catching color. I'm being loose with it, not worrying about my stroke or application much at all. Then I'm going to take this color and you know what? We'll throw a little bit of it up into our sky, both sides. Rub some of it out. Maybe create a reflection there of these different markings that we just created. And just play with it. So here again, just a loose tap with this very bright pigment. Skipping some areas, but not all. And you can see that it's already becoming just an entirely different, interesting painting. I want some pink here on the horizon, so I'll take some primary red, some titanium white, mix that up, maybe throw a little bit of orange into it. There we go. Blending it to a point up into my cloud, but not too much. And then of course, we'll have it down here doing something similar. Also just going to throw a couple different strokes of it to balance it over on other areas of the painting. Looks really nice with the blue, I find. So maybe we'll just throw a little bit of it in there too. And if you feel like you've added too much color when you're adding this kind of impressionistic layer, you can just take a very wet brush, just like we've done with everything else, blend it out, Use your hand. And you can see that it's creating all of these really different interesting effects and colors that you can paint over or work with. Creating just such an interesting sky at this point. There we go. Working that into different lines in our bridge. And at this point, we're really going over most of the canvas again. And that's not a bad thing at all. I feel like I could have some blue down there. Now when you do this, you have to go back and make your bridge more stark again. So I'm going to do that with some of my cadmium red light hue, some of my primary red, and a lot of Mars black, and we'll just darken some of this bridge yet again. Not all of it. I'm going to do a lot of the bottom areas though because I want to kind of ground it in these darker pigments. And then it becomes lesser up top. And then I'll just do a little bit of a tapping through here. 
and work some of these darker strokes into the foreground as well. There we are. Kind of bring this back into existence, give it a little more contrast. But this impressionistic style, it's really just to play with color, to get the feeling, to continue to play with it and break reality, but to heighten the painting in the process. It isn't just about being loose, it's about being loose and thoughtful with it. So I added the pink up here because I really liked it with the blue and because I wanted to balance it over here. I'm going back and I'm adding these darker pigments because I want to kind of bring the bridge back and, and be a little bit more uh, poppy and punchy than it was. So we're doing everything with purpose. It's just not the purpose of reality. And that's important to note. I added blue right here because I have a lot of blue in the sky and I just wanted to bring that down and I have it kind of in an unblended stroke right there just because I think it's a, a really nice look and having that brush stroke, you know, it reminds us that we are painting with acrylics here again or at least using the medium of paint and that's a beautiful thing. Going to throw a couple more vertical strands of blue onto this edge because we have a lot over there. Take a little bit more titanium white, mix that in. Create maybe some really light bright clouds in here. Blend some edges, have some that pop a little bit more. And again, I'm going to want to heighten more of this orange as we continue to lose it under the other colors. So this is the cadmium red light hue and the titanium white. There we go. Here I'm blending up some of the orange just to get some softer blends and different interesting colors happening up here in the sky. And then I'll just throw a couple little strands up here of larger stroke. I blended this one a little bit because I felt like it was too punchy for that area. It just drew too much attention. It was the brightest value in the painting. And I still want that to be down in here. So I'm going to work to make the bridge pop a little bit more, again, with titanium white and cadmium red light hue. This is my kind of ultimate goal in the painting to make the bridge still stand out amongst all of this color. And the best way to do that is to continuously work on these nice layers. Here I'm adding some highlight even into the one in the background. I do still want it to get lost to a point, but I, I want it to pop as well. And I'm going to throw a little bit of this into the sunset, into the pink to diversify that color a little bit more. There we go, that's really nice. Sometimes you just kind of land on nice colors. You don't really intend to make them in this. It just kind of happens and you're very grateful for it. I'm 
really like the blue here. I'm going to throw a little bit of this blue into more of the middle of this bridge here, just because it's going to really make the oranges pop. And that's what we're trying to do. So it doesn't make sense in this area, in this context, but it's going to really help with the mood of the painting. There we go. I'm going to throw a little bit more of our blue back in here, just because it became a very orange and pink area. And with that, I think here we have our hour, but probably closer to two or three long lesson. Today we cover achromatic painting, we covered glazing, we covered impressionism. We did a lot and I have to say I am, I am so pleased with how this came out. It's better than my initial vision for the painting and I'm glad we just kind of went with our instincts on it. I'm sure that yours all look completely different because glazing is such a, uh, a loose style and so is impressionism. It's all about just finding the areas that you want to accentuate and uh, the colors that you want to accentuate and you know bringing that mood and that feeling of the painting into fruition. So I can't wait to see what you come up with. As always, of course, if you are a member of the Alpine level on Patreon or above, please post your work over to the Facebook group. I, I love seeing those and I think that this will be an amazing piece to, to see everybody's versions of. Um, I will be back very soon with probably a more linear episode, one where we, we don't do as much of these um, more loose techniques, but I do want to do more of these in the future. Uh, I want to kind of instigate a nice balance of them. So that is today's lesson. Now, uh, while it did get as loose as it did, I, I still really, really thank the reference photo for getting me here. I feel like I needed the structure to be able to break it in the way that we did. Otherwise, it would have just looked messy. So if you do have issues with the drawing, the reference photo and the traceable are up over on Patreon. And so thank you for joining me here today. I will see you next Saturday with another new hour to maybe three hour long lesson. And thank you for stopping by. This was a pleasure.